Hey you guys, it's Mikkel and today I am in front of my home library. Um, just part of it actually because today I want to talk about literature, music, and art in our home and in our family and the power of that and how it turns my life and my kids lives from like black and white into full on color 3D, just this grand experience on earth. It really is the, the color to life. I'm a ballet dancer, I'm classically trained. And so classical music and uh, ballet and all those, those fine arts are just in me, they're in my spirit. I grew up that way, I grew up in the arts in the art world appreciating all of that so it it wasn't like a new thing for me to learn to appreciate it just has run in my blood and um, I've always felt a connection with Heavenly Father and with my Savior through music and dance and all of that I first wanted to talk about um, literature we'll start there I want to just put my gratitude for Jenny Phillips for helping to transform our our eyes as parents and um, sift the bad and bring the good and bring it into our into our hands. I'm just so grateful for all that Jenny has done. And behind me, you guys, is my good and beautiful library. And I am just so grateful. These books are gifted to me. Um, the good and the beautiful puts them in a box and ships them to me. And I am eternally grateful for that. I never take it for granted or advantage of it. My two boys that are 12 they since stopping the video games they started picking up reading like i mean it was insane i can't even keep up with these boys they read so much and so fast and so like they're just tearing through these books they've read the entire good and beautiful library i seriously want to come on here one day with my boys and they can just go through all these books and tell you whether like why they liked it and all this stuff because um they would be an incredible resource for maybe some of you that have middle school boys that are you're having a hard time pulling them in the books number one pull the plug on video games and all that stuff and just get them in these books <laughs> i do pull from the good and the beautiful um their book list which is incredible and they've loved every single book on the book list <laughs> so my friend Lillian, she is awesome, and she reminded me about the landmark books because I was talking to her about my kids needing to read more books, and I'm just running out. And um, she reminded me of the landmark books. And I don't know if you guys have heard of landmark, you need to go search it. But here's my landmark library that I'm starting. Here's some here, and I'll scoot back. Here's some here. Okay, so landmark books, they were written, I think, in the 1950s. And they're about history. When you're, you get your kids to read, you can do less teaching. And they'll just be in the books and they'll be learning from these great books. And they'll be reading and reading and reading and reading. And really, the books do the teaching job for you. And I'll just show a little bit of these. And I get the vintage, like, copies, okay? Um, like this. Smells a little musty, but there's something, like, kind of endearing about that. <laughs> Historical, musty-smelling books. Um, so that is my land, my landmark library that I'm starting. So my landmark library, I'm going to be putting it up here. My good and the beautiful library is right here. And then below is my, um, is my library uh, that I'm building on my own from the good and the beautiful book list from, uh, books, classics that I read as a child and that I love. Um, one of those includes the yearling. Okay, speaking of Asher again, he read this in like three days. You guys, it's huge. Um, books like this are classics. They're clean, they're beautiful, and they're just beautiful stories. Um, another thing is with books. I get so many emails of parents asking, you know, my child is social and they need friends and blah, blah, blah. My kids are social too, you guys. <laughs> it's not like... Only non-social children homeschool. Okay, let me tell you something. When you are in a story with a character and you're living in their life and you're with them, they, when you love literature and you're reading really good literature, they become a real friend. They do. And so 
and, and they're a valiant friend. They're a noble friend. And you get to walk through their trials, their choices, their story, their, their ups and their downs, and you get to see their redemptive moments beside them the whole way through. And so nothing is more powerful than that, than walking with a friend on a page through a book, through their life and learning through their experiences. It is so incredibly powerful and it has shaped my kids' characters. It's given them this uh, beautiful outlook on life and how to approach decisions and make choices and make correct choices because they've seen some not correct choices through other, other people, right? So, um, literature. Okay. I, I need to come on here and tell a couple of my favorite books, but I also read aloud to my children and that is just the most beautiful thing a mother can do with her kids is read aloud. Um, and it's the easiest you guys, you don't have to plan anything. You just open the book and read. <laughs> Again, I'm just so absolutely grateful for good literature. There's it's, it's so powerful and I feel like it is a link to, to heaven. Um, I think I've said enough about the reading. <laughs> I could go on all day about books. <laughs> I should just take you through the library someday. It's really, really fun. Okay, so I'm going to move on to art. Um, art to me is like, it, it's like the beating heart. It's, it's almost like parting the veil and looking into heaven. Just using art in every single lesson, holding up a painting, um, having them seek out a painting they love, um, having them sketch, you know, if we're studying about a, an important person, having them sketch that person as we're learning and just incorporating, creating, and um, that just movement of bringing visual, bringing the words into a visual format. Get pictures and, I, and we tear these out and we'll laminate them or we'll put them on their wall and we'll just have them close and it can really bring you that, that feeling of heaven here. Um, so art, oh, art is just a joy in our home. Now something that is, is an, another joy in our home and that turns our house from like I said black and white to color and brings it to life and, and kind of brings that heaven closer is music. I can kind of tell you what we've done to center our home on music. Um, Mackenzie plays piano and she sings and Asher plays piano. Uh, Connor plays the cello and Drew plays piano. Um, and along with that, I also play classical music. I just, it's so beautiful to have classical music playing in your home all the time you know, Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, um, all of the amazing composers. And I have their little, their little figurines are up here of the composers on my bookshelf. And so we just, I put a very rigorous emphasis on music um, because I was a ballet dancer and music is like in my soul. I just, it's so important. It's, it's just to me, music and having those talents is just as important as math. It's just as important as writing. It's just part of us and it's lifelong, it's life lasting. And it brings again, it brings this life, this joy to your house and it gives them an outlet and a talent that they can have for the rest of their lives. Um, that's music to us and I, I personally feel like music is my personal connection to to the heavens. I, I feel with all these things, with literature, with art, with music, um, as we're, we're in them, we're studying them and we're creating them because now my kids are starting to be writers. They're wanting to write their own books. They're composing their own songs and they're making their own art. Um, it's as if they were tutored by these incredible tutors, right? Through the books, they were tutored by certain characters and, and they have all these mentors and they have all these tutors that I've been able to give them through, through all these different facets of, of books and art and all this. It's like they all became these living tutor, tutors to my children, these living mentors. And, and they've been in kind of this apprenticeship with, um, as they've been studying these these books and, and studying the art, it's almost like they, they become this mini apprentice and they take it in and then they go, they go off and they become inspired and they start creating their own. 
And that is where it's just mind blowing because to turn everything that you're feeding your kids, just this good fruit, this good, beautiful, pure of the best, the best fruit that you're giving your kids, then they go and they create better. They create this heavenly thing, whether it's writing or an art piece or they are creating. And, and by doing that, they are actually being a type of Christ because Christ created, he, he built our world. He, this is his creation. And with them making their own mini creation, they are connecting with their savior and mirroring him and patterning, pat, patterning, being a pattern of him in what they're doing. And it's the most heavenly thing we can do is creating. It's the most amazing gift that we can be given is to create and become like heavenly father and Jesus Christ in that way. And I just feel like there's such a power with literature, music, and art. And I'm, and the only way that it has a power and possesses a power is when it is linked to God, when it has God woven through it, when it has Christ woven in it, that's where the power comes from. And that is it. Um, and so everything we have in our home, the literature, the art, the music, it has God woven into it. And that's what makes the power. And I wanted to leave you guys. I, I found this clip from a talk from Elder Holland years back. It was called Why Religion Matters. And um, he included this little clip of art and music and it just stirred my soul and I wanted to end this video with that with that clip because it's really the only way to stir your soul and to share what I feel in me the gratitude I feel in me for all of the art in our world that that brings God to us and shines it out to the world. Oh,